Hey everybody, welcome to another Conan uh, tutorial. Uh, and today what we're going to do is we're going to cover um, post-processing and lighting. I get a lot of questions asked about this and a lot of people get um, confused on it and don't know how, exactly how to implement it to create you know darker dungeons or areas and kind of customize the lighting a little bit. So we'll kind of cover a little bit of that. There's also some more advanced tutorials on post-processing and lighting on YouTube. But for the dev kit, we'll just kind of make this very simple. So what I usually do is, since the Funcom dev team already has this set up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy one of their post processes. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier for you too, because there's a lot of settings you can do with post processing. I mean, there's a, a ton of them. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up the Conan sandbox here. So let me go ahead and find our maps folder real quick for the sandbox. And um, we'll go ahead and get this loaded. See, where is my folder? There it is. Okay, Conan Sandbox. So we'll open this up. Click here. All right, awesome. Okay, and usually the best one to start with, um, so if you like the, the um, what is it? The, uh, I'm trying to think of that dungeon across up here in the north. The, keep for, the Black Keep. So if you go up to the Black Keep here, you're going to see a bunch of uh, volumes here. Okay, and there should be a post process volume in the mix here. So I'm going to go ahead and go type PP in the world settings. And what this will do is bring up a lot of post process volumes, okay, in your uh, world outliner. And what we're trying to do is find the dungeon ones. And if you go down through the list of the dungeon ones, eventually we're going to highlight the. Uh, there we go. There's our post process right there. So we can go ahead and what we can do is we have Control C. And I'm just making sure I got it. Control C, Control C to copy. And you can also right click in your world outliner, go edit, and go copy as well. Okay. So we want that post process because that's, if you notice, if I kind of go in here, the light kind of shines up and goes down. Okay. And also, what we'll do too is we're, gonna, we're also going to get the uh, sun occluders, which are these things here. This helps darken the areas around your dungeons. Okay. So let me go ahead and real quickly, I'm just going to make sure black keep. I think that's going to be here in our levels. And you're going to see the black keep is going to be. Let's see, where is it? I think it's called the abandoned keep is what it's called in the dev kit now is the abandoned keep. All right, we'll load that up quickly. And if you load up the abandoned keep, this this is the easier place to get your um, your sun occluders as well. Let's go ahead and load this up. It's going to take a little bit. Show you these and what I'm talking about as far as what's wrapped around and how they're cubed around the, the dungeons. And this helps block out light from the engine around the dungeon, or if you have any like cracks between your meshes, this will help darken those too. So you, you want to try to get your meshes as close as possible and not leave a bunch of gaps for lighting to uh, pass through. Okay, world lighting that is. So it's almost loaded here. We're at 100%. Boom. Okay. So you can see these are the occluders. And what they do is they actually wrap the dungeon. Okay, and they, they block out the light technically. It doesn't look like it in here, but actually it does. And that, that darkens things up so when you're inside the dungeon and you hit play, it'll keep all those little cracks or any imperfections in the mesh placement from uh, peeking through, okay? And then, of course, we'll work on, like I said, point lights and some spotlights as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go back to our um, almost empty map, or our dev folder. And what we should do is we should have a copy of that post process. And like I said, I got a little box kind of dungeon set up here to play with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, edit, and paste here. And notice how it kind of lit the place up when we go into it. Okay. And you'll notice now it's, it's a little bit dark, but it, post processing is strange and it's to do with the lighting. So we got this kind of this dark sense in here. However, if we want it darker, um, what we can do is real quickly, I'm just going to go to the details. So under the dungeon keep, post process, but you can rename this for your mod, or whatever you're working on. And what you can do is you can type uh, bright and you can actually 
believe it or not, adjust the brightness inside the post process. Okay. These settings are very, very touchy. So if you notice, you can see we're getting like really crazy. We're at 10 right now. So tor remember your torches are gonna have to affect some of the lighting around you as well. So always keep that in mind when you're adjusting your lighting. Okay. And then if you want to change, like say the color, right? So right now this is the, the black keep. So it's kind of got this kind of a green hue to it. And it's also got a vinaigrette feel as well. So what we'll do is we can type tint and you should have different scene tints. And the one check mark here, I believe this is the correct one here. And if you, as you notice, we can change the color of tint inside the post process to get a feel for what we want. Now that's pretty crazy there, but <laughs> so just carefully adjust it to what your theme is. Um, and remember your point lights are gonna be affected too when you do this as well. So I'm just gonna kind of set it back to kind of a neutral spot here for now. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit save on our almost empty. And then I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go back to our Conan sandbox and open it up. Now let's go get that post process or sorry, the occluders. So if we open up the abandoned keep in our level of windows, so we got that, let's load it up. Let's go ahead and fly to it. It's over here in the back corner. Now you can copy this entire cube because I believe the dev team has grouped it together, I think. Let me see here. But we have to get inside here to get it. Nope, it's going to be a pain in the butt. All right, let me see here. World Outliner, Occluders. Uh, let me type Occluder, or is it Cube? I think it's under Cube. There we go. It's under Cube. All right, so it's Cube light blockers. All right, and you can copy that entire thing if you like. And then you can adjust the sizes later for wherever your, your dungeon layout is. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. And then we're going to go back to our uh, dev folder where our almost empty map is. And we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do, right click here, edit, and we're going to paste this in. Okay. So now we got our occluder box. So now that's going to block out a lot more light around our area here. Okay, so it's a bit darker and notice that it's no longer light through there because that occluder is blocking out the ultra dynamic sky. So if we go out here, you can see that, but if we go back in here, it darkens it. And what you also want to be careful too is when you do this is make sure you double check yourself because your occluders will show up like this if you accidentally you know, misplace it and cut off your dungeon or something like that. So just carefully adjust. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, search for um, one of the pre-made blueprints, one of the brazers, and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to take this uh, BP Alter right here, brazer, and you can see that the lighting looks pretty nice. It's already pre-set up. Now, the trick with lighting, too, when you do this, is you got to remember that when you're doing this, shaders are affected by lights, okay? And the closer the lights here, if you notice this little blue line, all right, around each one of these blueprints is what's the attenuation radius. And what you have to be careful of is you want to make sure that these are not overlapping each other, okay, as much as possible. I mean, you can get away with a little bit, but the recommended thing is make sure that they're not overlapping when you place them. Because this causes more work on the shaders as, the, as it has to draw the lighting on your textures, okay. So always keep that in mind when you're placing uh, point lights and spotlights as well. And you can have up to five in a particular area. So five can overlap if you want. However, I try to stay away from that if I can, but you can have five of them overlap and that's the max because the more lights you put on top of each other, and we're just gonna kinda, I'm just gonna paste this up. You'll, you'll start getting problems, okay, with lighting problems. And I can't remember what the key was. There's a there's a key setting when you're playing in the engine that you can check the lighting and the shadering. And uh, red is terrible. You know, you, yellow is bad. And then you get to green, it's good. Okay. Uh, so always double check your light settings. And I can't remember that off the top of my head right now. 
um, and I don't want to interrupt this tutorial going looking for it on Google. But there is a key that you can bring up the light settings and um, make sure that you're not taxing an area too heavily with shaders. Okay, so that's how you do that with the lighting. Now, um, say you don't want those brazers, you want to kind of create your own custom light. So what we do is we come in here, we find this this Akron prop. All right, now it's got the particle effect attached to it, but it has no light glowing off it. So what we can do is we go up to Windows, we go to Modes, and we'll bring up our Modes panel. And what you're going to do is you're going to search for point light. Okay. And you're going to drag a point light out. Okay. And you place it in the scene. Now you notice it's already got a preset attenuation. And what we want to do is go to the Details panel, and you can set the intensity of the light. See, now you don't want to go too crazy because it can blur, kill your textures. You also can change the color. So obviously it's going to be kind of like an orangey fire. So let's go with like that, or say it's a magical brazier, and we go with like kind of a kind of a pink here, right? And then what we want to do is we can increase and decrease the intensity, all right? We also want to make sure we go from static to movable, okay? Which changes to dynamic. And what happens is if you're you're cooking your mod or you uh, save your level. So for instance, let's see, this hopefully won't make me look like a liar, <laughs> but the dev kit always has ways of doing things. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go back, open up our sandbox map real quick, just to get this to uh, reset the level. And so when we open up the level, we should get a little red X. Okay, so we'll go back to our dev folder, almost empty. And what this is going to tell us is that the light is static. Oh, it's making me look like a liar. So if you ever get the red X on your point light, and I'm going to just go ahead and let's try this one more time. I'm just going to drag a new one in here. We're going to hit save. Because I think I touched it. it. It caused it to do a little funky thing in the dev kit. So one more time, we'll give this a shot and see, see if it'll make me look like a liar. But if you get the red X, what it means is that you got static light going. And in the engine, they're using ultra dynamic light or movable light sources. So you want your light source to be movable. Okay. And the movable light, the better. It looks much better. Um, your shadows cast better. That, it's going to make me look like a liar. So, yeah. So if you run into that in your point lights and you save your map and you come back in, and you're like, oh my gosh, why is this little red X there? And it'll be a little red X on top of your light bulb there. Just go ahead and change it to movable. That way it's a dynamic light, okay? All right, so we got our point light there. And then what we have is what we call the spotlights. And really quickly, let's see if we can find a spotlight. Just type spotlight. And spotlights, they have, they're have they interesting. And um, you can adjust, like, you want say you want light in a particular area or, or something to kind of beam up. If you notice there, we got the light kind of beaming in a particular spot. Okay, we want that movable as well. And then what we can do is we can adjust the cone angles, you know, the inside angle of the cones, uh, the attenuation radius, so we can get the light to expand more, you know, more direct. Okay, if you see that, we can bring the intensity. These are good to light up a particular spot of importance or things like that, or to simulate like, Light, lights in a, a window or casting into a window inside a house or something like that or through a crack. So you can basically just play with these uh, these settings here and uh, kind of come up with your you know your own light themes. Notice how we can change the colors as well. So kind of the same concept of the point light and say you want light to cast a certain way on a certain spot on a wall. You know you can kind of do that with these these spotlights to get a particular look like I said or Say you want to highlight a logo or something on the wall with these spotlights, you can do that. Just remember when the character passes under these lights, that if you're getting too close to a certain point, and if we hit play here, what we should see is the light kind of casting on the player really intense. So you want to adjust these accordingly so they're not too crazy. So hopefully this won't take too long to load in. Dun, 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 as we load in, come on, dev kit. But uh, yeah, so that's one way you can do things. Or you can also shrink post processes down too to where, um, say you got particular hallways you want to kind of 
light as it gets lighter. I mean, you can really play with these post process to create different environments, uh, transitions. Say you want it to look like as you're coming out of the dungeon, there's like a, a roof or a rock. You can light up the uh, post process, lighten it a little bit more. So as, as the player transitions out, it gets a little bit lighter. So notice how we walk into the spotlight and kind of cast down on the character. Okay. And if we get close here, notice how the light gets closer. That makes sense here on the brazier, but say you're out here on the side, right? So we'll hit escape and let's just go ahead and we'll copy this point light. And say you're just using it for like an environment. Say you got some of that blue algae down, right? And you want to kind of like cast light or the crystals to light up the crystals. If we hit play here, what you want to do is you want to make sure you set it just right and the intensity right. Otherwise, what you can do is you can kind of get this weird look like where like there's the, the point light, but it's casting on our character and we don't want it to do that. Okay. It looks kind of strange. See, so make sure you set your point lights in correct position so it doesn't look strange and bizarre. And you don't get these weird effects of flashing or strange things like that. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure I've covered everything. But really quickly, what I'll try to do, like I said, what you want to do is I'm just going to duplicate this one real quick, this post process, and we're going to shrink it down. And like I said, like say you're coming out of a cave, right? You want it to kind of cast kind of like you're going into the cave or kind of into a, you know, you're changing and transitioning out to a little bit lighter area. And what we can do is we're just going to go uh, brightness. We can increase the brightness a little bit on this. Okay. So what we should get here, hopefully, if I set this correctly, is it'll be a little bit brighter right here. And then as we go into the cave or into the dungeon here, our simulated dungeon, it'll transition kind of darker. See, see how that worked? So it gives that, that transition of like, oh, I went from light to dark. Just like that. There you have it. Okay, so you can you can kind of stack them in there correctly and things like that. So just remember, lighting is a it's a very particular process. It takes a lot of time. You have to have a lot of patience with it. Like I said, the, the quickest way to do it is copy a pre-existing post process inside the game and use that one and then play with it and tweak it to get it to where you want. OK, um, other than that, I think that kind of covers it. So we got our our sun occluders that block out the engine lighting around us, the sun, and it allows us to keep our dungeons nice and dark and dreary. Like I said, you can get them a little bit darker. If I hit play here one more time, I'll show you like a torch. And if you go too dark, um, this this will make it to where players can't light things up. So remember, your post process is going to affect the point light that's on this torch. Okay, so always keep that in mind when uh, you're designing your dungeons. That way you're not too dark because otherwise the player is going to go into your dungeon for no reason. And there, it's just going to be pitch dark. So keep that in mind as you build your dungeons out or you play with post-processing in the environment. Because not only are they used for dungeons, you can actually use them for overland as well. So say you want like an area of a swamp that's mystic purple or a mystic blue, you know, you can adjust it that way. But don't adjust it too dark where you're going in and, and your point lights or your torches from your players don't affect the lighting around them and then they're still lost in the dark and they're they're not going to appreciate that and you'll probably get a lot of hey your mod sucks <laughs> your light sucks you i can't see in the swamp so uh always keep that in mind as well but other than that i think we covered most of it so point lights uh spotlights post process really simple stuff uh post processing the volume um usually it's on the persistent level of the conan sandbox but if you're if you're modding a particular area in the game, I usually put it on a mod, camps mod level on the dungeon. It's usually where I put it with my dungeon is on the camps mod level. I don't put it on the persistent because if you save the persistent, and this is to kind of help everybody out there, this persistent level in the Conan Sandbox is a persistent level. There's people who make mistakes and they save this level here. And what it does is if they do any changes on this level, it overwrites the other level the other levels in mods like they're 
their sandbox. Say they saved a sandbox with things on it. What will happen is people will save this and it will start overwriting and, and start putting and mixing, mashing things, and it makes a total mess. So always remember to make sure you don't save the Conan sandbox at all because this also overwrite Funcom's updates as well too. So if you save your mod with this Conan sandbox and say Funcom came in and they changed something on the Conan sandbox level and they added, say, a, a new event with a new post-processing volume, a new physics volume for some water or something, and you've saved this, your change in your mod is going to overwrite Funcom's new changes. So keep that in mind. That's why I don't like to touch the Conan sandbox persistent. That's why I put all my stuff on the camps mod levels. Okay, so always keep that in mind as well. Or you can create your own map area, all right, and put it in there. Um, but other than that, that's kind of the tips and tricks that I can come up with and think about when doing this sort of thing. So, uh, like I said, I had a bunch of people ask me about post processing and lighting and how to adjust it. And just remember, there's also other tutorials out there on YouTube uh, talking about Unreal Engine. And you can use the Unreal Engine post processing because it's that's what it's made with. And you can use that to help you adjust certain things, play with different uh, options in the post process. And really quickly, I'll just kind of show you those things really fast here. So if we're looking at this thing here, um, you can see that there's all sorts of things you can do here with shadows, gamma, contrast, grains. Um, I, like I said, there was vinaigrette. There's tone mappers. You can change the tone. Like right here is vinaigrette intensity. So if we go inside here and we play with the vinaigrette, and it's best to see the light. So if we touch the vinaigrette intensity here, you can kind of see things will change a bit. Um, the threshold, see? There's all sorts of things you can do here, but you have to be careful in what you do because once you do that, it's going to be kind of crappy. Change it back unless you hit the little default values here. Okay. Um, other than that, that's basically what I can kind of cover on these. There's um, there's some cube maps, things like that right here, like a cube map texture. Um, I'm not quite familiarized with them yet, but it, what it, that can do is also change the way the post process reacts. So um, also keep that in mind as well. So there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of tutorials out there that will cover that stuff. So other than that, I think that's it. So I will try to do another tutorial um, covering, I believe it was going to be sound volumes. Um, there's some questions about sound volumes and the music volumes and how to put sound and music inside the dungeons as well or a particular area. So we'll try to cover that in the next tutorial. But other than that, um, with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for your support as well. Um, my Patreon is open. Um, thank you for the foot, my Patreons who have donated a dollar here, a dollar there. Uh, I do appreciate it, and um, it means a, a lot to me. And uh, we're still working on our, our Stygian Empire map, so it's looking pretty good. Um, so check it out. It's been released. And without further ado, have a good day, good evening where you're at, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.